What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to the Sylvasium YouTube channel, the number one channel on YouTube to stay up to date on all things health and wellness. So today we've actually got a pretty cool show for you. We're gonna be going over all things red light therapy and hair loss, okay? So I'm gonna be going over you know, what causes hair loss, but also we're gonna to touch base on how red light therapy can help you address this. So guys, look, funny story actually, about a few months ago, I went and saw a hair specialist because look, I'm getting older, my hair was thinning out, naturally receding, all that. Thing. So when I was meeting with this doctor, he had a look at my hair, we talked about what we could do for it and everything. But you know, what was actually pretty cool is that he said he does use red light therapy to treat patients. He's got the full on helmet and everything that'll set on their head. And you know, he told me it works. And he was like, I have clients that are getting a lot of benefits from this. I get it, you're skeptical. I was skeptical myself, you know, when I first started reading about this and everything. And it wasn't until I really spoke with this doctor that I really believed in it. All right, guys, so look, we're gonna cover what causes hair loss, all right? Now, the three main ones, hereditary hair loss, hair loss from poor nutrition, and hair loss from stress. Number one, hereditary hair loss. I don't think I really need to explain this one, but basically, if you're genetically predisposed to lose your hair, and it runs in your family, well guess what, your chances are, you're probably gonna lose your hair at some point in your life. So the proper scientific term for this is androgen... <laughs> androgenetic. Right. Androgenetic alopecia, okay? Don't you just love the scientific names? They gotta make everything complicated. So typically this is called male pattern baldness, and this can hit you know men at any age really, like late teens, um, in your 20s, and you know maybe even later in life. And what usually happens is you'll get the receding hairline, uh, your hair will thin out in certain spots and it'll begin to fall out. Now, big news here as well. Now, this just doesn't affect men. This is actually something that affects women as well. And it's called female pattern baldness. Some symptoms of this might be a widening part, um, hair thinning, or even, you know, slightly receding hairline. Now, number two, poor nutrition. So this is probably the easiest one that we can all address. Like, if your hair loss is attributed to poor nutrition, guess what, eat more protein. Because it's been shown that a lack of protein will actually cause hair loss. All right, so number three of the main hair loss causes, all right, is stress, okay? We all deal with stress. Men, women, everyone, you name it, doesn't matter where you're at in the world, all of us have some form of stress in our lives. And it has been scientifically proven that stress can cause hair loss. So it could be something related to your finances. It could be the loss of a family member. It could also be work stressing you out. You know, these, these are all things that could be causing your hair loss. While these are the top three, there are also other conditions that can lead to hair loss, such as thyroid disease, scalp infections, chemotherapy, pregnancy, and even hormonal fluctuations. There are quite a few ways actually to address hair loss. All right, now the first one is prescription medications, all right? Now this hair loss doctor that I met with, this is actually what he went over with me and he was like, you'll get the best results from this. But here's the issue with those pills, right? You gotta take them every day for the rest of your life if you wanna grow your hair back and keep it. Now these two prescription medications are called Medoxanil and Finasteride. Medoxanil is actually known to be a very potent blood pressure lowering drug and that's actually why they created it. But when they were researching it, they actually found that it was growing people's hair. So then they you know, put the puzzle pieces together and like, well, hey, guess what? If we give people low amounts of this medication, we can grow their hair back. Um, now you'll find Medoxanil in Rogaine, Regain, um, and also in pill form, which you can get from your doctor. In combination with the Medoxanil, most people will typically take Finasteride because Finasteride is going to keep the hair that you have. The big issue with these medications is guess what? They do have side effects, okay? And when I was researching this because I was gonna be taking it, guess what I found? I found out that people were having heart palpitations from it. Um, you'll also get heart pain, like chest pain and all that uh, from the Minoxidil. And with the Finasteride, it's been linked with sexual issues and all that. So I didn't want any of that. So I steered clear from all that. You know, not to mention as well, Minoxidil is actually highly toxic to household pets like cats. I mean, there's stories of cats eating it or licking it, getting really sick, and it can also kill them. No Medoxanil for this kitty. The all too talked about hair transplant, folks. Like, a lot of people think that you're gonna get a hair transplant and it's magically gonna look great. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I've seen some celebrities that look absolutely amazing. Like, if you see a photo of Elon Musk um, during his bald days compared to now when he has hair, it's amazing, it's like an act of God. It looks like a divine being touched him on the scalp. But anyways, the issue with hair transplant, right, is it's pretty painful, it can be expensive, 
and there are risks involved with it. I mean, you can get infections and all that. And not to mention, if you get a botched job, I mean, you can search for this in YouTube. Joe Rogan has a scar on his head. I think it's on the back where he had a botched hair transplant that ended up failing. Here's the thing as well. When you get that hair transplant, pretty sure you got to take medication again. So again, that's not something that I would think anyone would want to do. And look guys, let's be honest. Some of these hair transplants, they look fucked up. You can see that hairline coming down here and it just looks, dude, it doesn't look natural, all right? Yeah, you got your hair, but the back of your hairline is going to be all the way up here, all right? Transplants. Well, in this case, your transplanted hair is rejecting your body. Either you remove your hair graft or the host, you, will get sicker and eventually die. Not a good look. All right, so now on to the best one of them all. Now, I might be a bit biased, but red light therapy is the king of all of these, okay? Now look, with red light therapy, you shine it on your head, you don't have to worry about taking a pill every day, you don't have to worry about sexual issues, you don't have to worry about killing your girlfriend's cat, none of that stuff, okay? It's safe, it's effective, and it works. Yeah, and so what's pretty freaking cool about this as well, in a lot of hair transplant offices and hair clinics in general, they have these red light therapy helmets in them, man. I mean, people go in, put them on their head, they sit there and they just absorb the light. Now, look, it is something that you're gonna have to use every day or every other day, um, but you're just sitting in front of a light. And if you get one of the helmets, you can just put it on and you can work and everything. What I found from reading a bunch of different research papers is that the best wavelengths to experience hair regrowth from red light therapy are 620 nanometers and 660 nanometers. It's pretty cool how this works actually. So what the red light does is it stimulates the metabolism in the hair follicles and it actually increases the blood flow in the scalp. It can also increase collagen production and what this means is that there will be less oxidative damage and guess what? More hair growth. It enhances the creation of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, which is cellular energy. And when you increase the cellular energy, you'll also increase the production of keratin, which guess what? Leads to more hair growth. So it goes without saying, red light therapy does work and it's pretty effective for reversing hair loss. But one thing to keep in mind is that it's mainly effective for temporary hair loss issues like stress, hormonal changes, medications, maybe from surgery or illness. Red light therapy has so many other benefits besides hair loss. And, and I've covered this in another video that we'll link at the end of this. But here's the thing, if you do get a red light therapy device, right? And you get it for hair loss, okay? This is something that you're gonna be able to use for other ailments and other issues you might have. You can rejuvenate your skin, reverse the signs of aging. Um, you can use it for pain management. You can use it for wound healing. I mean, it's a pretty big list of things that it can address. So that does it for me. I had an awesome time actually going over this with you guys. And I do think it's kind of funny, like a bald guy like me, you know, I shaved my head actually yesterday, is going over hair loss and red light therapy. But it's something I wanted to do. It works, it will help you and it can change your life. Don't forget that we have so many different videos covering all things red light therapy, and we have a ton of stuff coming out in the future. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.